Михаил Владимирович, уважаемые коллеги, добрый день. Сегодня в программе... Esteemed Mikhail Vladimirovich, esteemed colleagues, uh, good day. Today, the program of the 22nd April International Scientific Conference on the Problems of uh, Economy and Society being held by High School of Economics every year. The, uh, the special report by the chairman of the Eurasian Economic Commission by Mikhail Vladimirovich Misnikovich, strategic directions uh, in the development of Eurasian economic integration until the year 2025. Mikhail Vladimirovich. I think you're quite used to the audience of the university. You are a doctor of economic sciences, uh, head of the Economic Ac Academy of Belarus, uh, honorable member of a number of universities. You have educated and brought several uh, bachelors of science, as far as I'm aware. So for you, meeting with the university is probably something quite customary, as well as pleasant, even though definitely we are welcoming you here. Uh, first of all, uh, in your capacity as a, a chairman of the Collegium of the Eurasian Commission, a person with the most richest uh, experience uh, uh, in uh, uh, production area, you've held high uh, positions in Belarus. Let me remind you that you were formerly you were head of the uh, st uh, the staff of the affairs of the president, uh, and you have the richest of international experience. All of these definitely will be useful and interesting to all the participants, all the listeners uh, of your report in the audience, uh, par partly uh, uh, physical, but unfortunately we have to observe limitations uh, to do with the logical situation so the audience here when we have online uh, students and postgraduate students teachers and staff who are interested in the matters of uh, regional development and uh, definitely Eurasian integration which is one of the key uh, topics for our in university and uh, 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 at the current uh, April conference, there are about a uh, dozen events dedicated to this uh, theme. So your report is definitely is a key event uh, in the Eurasian integration. Our committee has studied uh, interaction with the commissions practically since the moment of its inception. This cooperation has been uh, pursued along several avenues, first of all, uh, research and uh, expertise support. During the years of our collaboration, we've carried out about 30 research uh, uh, works, uh, uh, implementation of educational and scientific programs on the themes of Eurasia, including additional professional education for the uh, staff of the Commission, for, uh, for the professionals from the member countries of the Commission. Uh, we'll, the uh, conception has been uh, prepared with participation of the high school economics and the third uh, big block informational exchange conducting uh, joint events among which I would note uh, International Forum Eurasian Commission which we've been holding since the year 2015 at the, our university and uh, in uh, 2019 uh, as, as 2018 as part of our uh, April conference we had a session on the development of integration. And after the lecture, we'll have a ceremony of the signing of the program of cooperation. It's a, another program for two year long cooperation with the commission. So once again, we're very happy to welcome you here. We're very glad that you've been able to find the opportunity of presenting strategic directions for development of, of Eurasian integration until the year 2025, strategy 2025, which is the most important document in uh, uh, promoting uh, information process in the medium term uh, uh, prospects. So thank you very much for making the time and I'm really glad to give you the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, esteemed Ivan Valerievich, for such a friendly introduction of, my, of me and myself and announcing my 
by lecture, my report. In this way, I suppose you have excited maybe higher, certain high interest in terms of what we are to examine today. Of course, our meeting today, it, to some extent, it's a uh, uh, it, because of the coronavirus infection, y you know, it tends, which tends to limit uh, the opportunities in terms of space. I understand the virtual audience. Uh, so we are operating in this uh, uh, setting. So, I mean, I had some doubts uh, in terms of whether to give a classical kind of lecture or perhaps to give a discourse on some matters uh, that I would like to convey to the participants of the in the conference, but I I should think that uh, considering uh, that it's, it's quite a large scale uh, undertaking and it's quite a virtual uh, event, I would like to dwell on some basic forms of pre presenting my material, and then definitely we may have perhaps some discussion, uh, exchange of opinions, uh, and uh, I'll be prepared for this and definitely uh, take into account the fact that higher school economics is, of course, it's a, it's a buzzword, uh, very celebrated name. Everybody feels, uh, has special feelings when talking about wonderful ac accomplishments that you have to credit. And to me, that's also to some extent, uh, it's very interesting. It's my first time, actually, that I'm speaking at this university, so I should think that uh, will be Uh, very interesting uh, interlocutors to each other, esteemed organizers and attendees of the April International Conference on the Problems of Economy and Society. Indeed, I'm very glad of this invitation to speak today before you. The April Conference, which has traditionally been organized by the National Research University of High School University, economy. It's really a very special event. It's a landmark uh, event in many regards. And definitely as far as the materials that I have at my command, I can see that uh, we have a very wide uh, uh, circle of high level attendees. Uh, so we can uh, safely say that we have this unifying initiative uh, involving most advanced uh, representatives of the expert community. Um, many thanks uh, for, to, for the fact that in the program of the conference 2021, quite a lot of attention has been uh, uh, earmarked for considering the matters of the Eurasian agenda. In order to Uh, to lead up uh, in some way to uh, those materials which make up, uh, constitute the stretch of development until the year 2025, I should think it will be quite appropriate for us to say once again, uh, to speak of the logic of the world development uh, uh, overall. And uh, the world economic crisis of the year 2020 was definitely driven by the changing of technological and economic uh, models. Much is being uh, assigned to a pandemia, coronavirus virus, and attributed to this. But I should think that pandemia only sped up uh, some uh, international process. Of course, there's a, a proprietary input in inverted commerce on the part of this negative epidemiological situation. But one should consider the, all the issues comprehensively. What we have, uh, definitely long-term stagnation and because of the past, uh, postponing of strategic decisions, uh, negative demand on strategic uh, markets, we should speak of that too. All those were uh, factors that were overlaid uh, on those shortcomings. Uh, so now in the 2021, we're at the level of about 3.5%, according to the uh, estimations of the International uh, Monetary Fund. Uh, the GNP of US is about 
uh, 3%, uh, European Union minus 72 Germany minus 54 Great Britain minus 10%. Uh, uh, China, of course, has grown at 5.3% uh, and has achieved positive dynamics even as far back as the third quarters of last year. So those indicators are quite sad, but not critical. Uh, so, uh, so as far as the forecasts, unfortunately, negative forecasts didn't come to be fulfilled. Fortunately, the fall of the world economy of the leading countries, including the states that are members of the Eurasian Economic Union, it's happening, it's taking place, but it's uh, this fall, but it's not as maybe as deep, as great as uh, could be expected based on the negative forecasts of the expert community. Pandemia and crisis has uh, aggravated a number of other issues, increasing level of protectionism, the crisis of multilateral trade systems, uh, uh, the unilateral uh, refusal uh, uh, of, con of, 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 of pursuing uh, uh, joint agendas and the isolation of leading economies of the world. So all these uh, issues uh, and others, definitely one we uh, spoke of globalization, about coordinated steps. Uh, now, among others, the key economies, primarily the United States, they're considering uh, the matters of their isolated uh, individual development, uh, which, of course, uh, causes great adjustments to the previously adopted decisions. I suppose that all the facts that I've listed basically represent a step backwards, which is not characteristic of the uh, commonwealth of independent uh, states and the uh, Eurasian Union, which I represent today. So uh, with us, the matters of cooperation, the matters of complementing, mutually complementing development, those matters to us are still uh, matters of pri priority. So in the situation that uh, is developing, one of the more effective uh, avenues of development, uh, definitely the deepening of regional integration and building based on this, uh, uh, achieving a renewal, the year 2021 is the seventh year of the functioning of the Eurasian Economic Union. We believe uh, that our union uh, has uh, emerged as an integ integral element of the economic model. Back in the year 2014, the treaty was signed uh, on the Eurasian Economic Union. It, uh, it's of comprehensive character, and the member states were able to agree on the full-fledged full integration on the wide uh, circle of uh, matters. Indeed, this treaty and all the decisions uh, that were adopted uh, as part of uh, uh, the Eurasian Customs Union. All this gave a great uh, impetus, impulse to the development of integration and, provide, and the paradigm of cooperation that was uh, offered uh, uh, has been um, proven as, uh, as real, uh, as really effective. So a few figures during the five years, 21% increase in the turnover of goods, uh, we're achieving almost uh, Two trillion dollars uh, during this period. During the same period, uh, industrial production uh, grew by uh, uh, grew, and also as far as the processing industry, which grew, which provided the growth of 30, I'm, I'm sorry, for for 15 percent. I'm citing these figures because they're quite higher, for example, than uh, uh, the similar indicators uh, relating to the Euro European Union or industry. Production grew by 5%, including industry, processing industry by 6.1%. Of course, you as experienced economists can say that uh, uh, sp uh, speaking of the basic principles, uh, of course, uh, here we have, uh, we need to be aware that uh, uh, the ma matters of Productivity, the level of added value uh, that's, uh, that are typical of the economy of uh, 
developed countries, that has yet to be achieved. At the same time, the overall volume of uh, the balance of trade of the member states during this period of five years has increased by 2.7%. And now we in, in, in conducting business as, as a joint economy, we hold the 29th place of, uh, 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 of more than 100 economies. Uh, typically, we've gone up by 12 uh, positions. And in this regard, uh, the contribution of, of Russian uh, Federation was, was quite considerable, which increased its uh, position by uh, 16 points. But, as far as the market of goods uh, of the Eurasian Economic Union and uh, the market of services, today the uh, market of services is operating in 53 sectors. A single uh, customs code was adopted uh, providing for the freedom of the movement of uh, uh, labor force. I would like to em emphasize especially that agreement was signed on pension uh, provision for the citizens of the member states of the Eurasian uh, Union, which took effect in January 2021. Uh, so basically, as of today, the pension dealt with regardless of or of the place of the uh, service of uh, work. Uh, uh, it's all being summed up. Uh, 49 technical uh, regulations are relating to the goods that are being uh, traded. On the whole, more than 12,000 international standards that are uh, in, the, in our database. In this way, we have about 85% of the goods being traded already have been certified according to the single unified technical norms. I'd like to sum it up. The single customs tariff, the, the customs code that have been adopted, effectively they provide an external outline and, and domestic trade, the uh, unified market, which is regulated by the single technical regulations and standards. Now, of course, one can raise a question at the same time, whether we have achieved those goals that were set when the treaty was signed in the year 2014. Of course, uh, the pace could have been higher, and, uh, and the causes, the way I see them, are as follows. I do not claim uh, to provide exhaustive list, list of the causes but uh, at the same time, first of all, not complete implementation of the integration potential as far as the industrial production in particular. That is to say, we still have uh, lack uh, orientation towards specialization of uh, economies. We may not, uh, not sufficient level of in, in industrial cooperation and the quality of competitive uh, quality of products produced, goods produced, uh, still leaves something to be desired. I would like to clarify this. Um, Indeed, we seem to have quite a lot of joint companies, about 17,000 uh, enterprises uh, with a joint uh, uh, gross uh, domestic output is still not uh, sufficient. So it's enough to Sorry, sorry, not enough for, uh, for the large volume of industrial cooperation. So, of Eurasian, uh, so compared to other major uh, industrial corporations, we don't have this level yet. So, national development, and the second step should be definitely, should be d deepening of uh, integration, uh, uh, joining into large industrial corporations, which could be positioned in a serious way on the domestic markets as well as on the markets of uh, uh, abroad. Second issue I'd like to draw your attention to is fairly low level of investment in the, in the capital, in the main 
and capital. So far, we are uh, trying to make sure that we engage as much as possible the potential that we have at our command now, but we all need to be aware that uh, the previously created industrial capacities, they definitely not, uh, it's not enough. We need to pay more attention to investment activities. So all the activities relating to the uh, saving, uh, the use of savings uh, for innovations, uh, that's really a direction of priority until the year 2025. We, so we'd like to draw more serious attention to this. This slide, uh, you can see on this slide that uh, we had certain indicators which were more or less uh, okay, but as far as the year 2020, we ended up in the negative zone. Uh, the third point is as far as the lack of balance of uh, domestic and external trade. The prevailing share definitely is held by by the raw materials export. There are 2019, so one billion dollars worth of uh, trade, and the trade with, within the union and was 61 billion dollars. So. Uh, the 2020 external trade over turnover was 26 and 8 billion dollars. The trade within the union was 55 practically billion dollars. So the ratio was 11 to 1. That is to say, we are seeing that uh, still we have the prevalence of the mass of the trade with uh, far abroad uh, countries. Even though, if we look at the Im import of our countries, it's quite high too. And I will, I'm going to mention as a, a, a later about the initiatives uh, that we foresee to increase the volume of uh, import substitution as part of the agreed uh, actions. The next uh, uh, downside that I would like to bring to your attention, maybe you'll be able to help and adjust our uh, activities, if there's some proposals for, to this effect, not uh, sufficient engagement into the integration of representatives of the business circles. But all those uh, in integration initiatives and steps that I've been describing, they tend to rely on administrative uh, resource. As for initiatives from below, we have yet to see uh, any major initiatives. Uh, uh, so the work uh, with the uh, Union of uh, uh, em Employers, uh, c Commercial and Trade Chambers, other associations, it all uh, suggests that we have uh, a lot of work to do yet on this front. If we look at the next uh, slide, uh, uh, which features the results of the year 2020, here we see in the year 20. The results of 2020 uh, compared to uh, 2019. Uh, of course, uh, there are pandemic and all those related factors, but the way the early 2021 looks, according to our estimates, it, things look quite good actually. Uh, the negative impact of pandemia, we believe, to some degree, has been uh, is becoming uh, weaker. So I would like to cite the example of Belarus in industrial production uh, com 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 compared to the two months of the 2020, uh, the uh, mutual trade of the states of the union has increased by 3.3. .3. So far, we only have data for January. And according to the forecast of international organizations, we're expecting uh, on the whole in the world and uh, with us a cyclical uh, restoration of the world economy is to be expected. So, according to our analytical uh, calculations, we believe the the pace of the growth of the domestic gross product of the Russian Federation make uh, by 2021 maybe about three percent, uh, and by 2022 maybe up to 3.9 percent. What needs to be done for this? For, for this to this end, one needs to have coordinated uh, actions. And by way of informing, I would like to, to bring to your attention that when this disaster happened, uh, 
we had the opportunity to uh, in February, in particular in the month of March, uh, the management of resources that we had as far as the medic medicines, uh, uh, products of critical importance. So we did try to uh, cr create conditions uh, for effective functioning as during the crisis period and during the period of post-crisis uh, restoration and recovery. And of great importance, of course, is the timely development by Russian federations of highly effective vaccines uh, for coronavirus, organizing the shipments and local production in the, in the countries of the member states of the Eurasian Union, which actually may serve as a positive example of int uh, integration, uh, specific cooperation in the interest of millions of people. So this is uh, m many of our sessions and meetings were de dedicated to these matters. Uh, it's enough to say that th three times in the course of last year, heads of states uh, came to a meeting and to, to discuss the matters, not just relating to coronavirus, but also matters of developing e economies. Uh, so in the governments uh, held six uh, uh, sessions of the, of the Eurasian Council uh, where important issues were raised. And we have also the system uh, uh, such as uh, Collegium, which convenes every uh, Tuesday on a weekly basis to, uh, as I was preparing for our meeting, we looked at uh, only during, during last year, Collegium adopted 187 decisions of direct effect, uh, not just some decla declaratory uh, statements with references, uh, but the actual decisions that were adopted in the interests of our states. The second level of the of governance commission, uh, the of the f five states, also seventy three uh, decisions of direct effect were adopted. This uh, uh, suggests uh, this uh, unification of work is not just formal. Uh, matter all decisions, however difficult, are being dealt with. Matters are uh, being uh, resolved, uh, the matters of the agenda of the interested countries. Also, I'd like to note that if, whilst Collegium may take some decisions with qualified majority, but as far as they're taking decisions at the level of the Council of the Commission, that's when uh, the Vice Premiers uh, uh, have their sessions, and, and Prime Ministers and Heads of States those decisions are adopted strictly based on consensual basis. On the one hand, it might appear to be a good thing, uh, not ignoring maybe opinions of particular countries, but it's uh, very uh, complex when it comes to uh, governing and administering. You all experienced people. You know that quite often interests, decisions in the interests of majority Not just trying, not just not just trying to make sure that all approaches are coordinated. I should uh, let me be frank with you. Sometimes decisions uh, by some countries may pursue some unilateral, uh, uh, country-specific. Uh, of course, it's uh, not a, not nothing artificial or far-fetched, but sometimes they don't quite fit into the agenda of all the five countries. But that's how it's all set out in our treatment, that the presidents, the prime ministers, and vice, prim vice premiers only take decisions based on consensus. And if, uh, if any decisions fail to be reached uh, in a coordinated manner, then definitely those norms are no longer uh, effective. It was very uh, challenging during the time of pandemia and during that time, we were actually putting finishing touches to the draft uh, strategy. Uh, when we had this, uh, we faced this temptation, maybe, to take some decisions uh, uh, on, the, on the spot. We had to use a lot of intellectual power to convince each other that in this kind of situation, only through joint efforts that we can achieve maximum effect.
Now, the flows of goods from Kyrgyzstan to Kazakhstan and to Russian Federation, the, there are points of uh, preliminary notification that uh, exercise control over the shipment of goods, which should not be the case, basically. So all this uh, uh, tends to create certain uh, nervous uh, moods. So sometimes you have to resolve those matters as you go along. There were, of course, matters, as I mentioned, uh, in, that tended maybe to uh, uh, hold back somewhat process of integration. But in this regard, we were able to achieve, uh, to make sure that the strategy that was signed by heads of states on December 11th, 2020, to, after all, still to broaden the horizons of the Treaty of 2014 and to take a look at more effective approach towards pursuing integration across key spheres and definitely uh, matters relating to the uh, formulating regulations and norms. Even despite the fact that our treaty is an economic one and the Union, uh, Eurasian Union is a Eurasian economic union, in our strategy we have uh, uh, reached uh, new uh, areas of cooperation, particularly economic cooperation spheres such as education, healthcare, tourism, sports, and so on. So we believe that uh, there needs to be a certain uh, uh, social uh, orientation towards the process uh, that we're implementing as part of our economic uh, union. As far as, if we were to sum up uh, this particular uh, uh, area, it appears that the strategy that was uh, developed uh, on implementation until the year 2025, we still need to develop and adopt a total of 13 new international treaties, and the legal acts of our Eurasian Economic Union, and as we uh, and we saw that we need to introduce. Uh, it's very challenging uh, task, so we need to do work to bring close to our positions. And I want to say that, unfortunately, sometimes at the medium level of uh, governance administration, we have to deal with the uh, uh, statements, maybe suggesting, let's not look at this uh, topic because it's not uh, envisioned by tr the treaty, or those kinds of things. So it's, the, it's in terms of the role of the regulations and norms uh, contained in the in, in the treaty and what ensues from the treaty. Well, we need to try and look beyond the horizon in our vision in order to be able to uh, matters and, and issues. Of course, participants in the, in the conference today may have questions regarding the barriers that uh, still uh, exist in the trade between our countries. Uh, those barriers are created not by the Commission. Those barriers are created by the countries, uh, trying to some degree to do, protect the interests of national producers. And of course, uh, that tends to elicit uh, uh, measures of uh, re response from other countries. Of course, thanks God, we never uh, end up with the trade wars, but we have to make some positive uh, changes. And uh, we've had some uh, since 2016. It's the first time we've been able to uh, reduce the number of barriers to 59. Over the last year, under the chairmanship of Belarus, we were able to remove 83% of all the barriers that were identified, barriers in mutual trade. Also, there were other uh, violations, other uh, hurdles. Of course, a big issue for us is what is referred to as uh, limitations and exemptions. Well, exemptions basically are set out in the treaty, 
And Ivan Valerich, you already mentioned that uh, that you'd uh, done certain research uh, work for us. So many thanks to you for this. But now we actually uh, uh, we are thinking actually of do some serious work with uh, limitations. Limitations are the hurdles that have yet to be regulated by law. So in this regard, for the year 2021, 20, uh, 22, we're plan planning on maybe having uh, 12 or 15 such uh, uh, limitations that are still in place to be resolved and maybe to, and the, to complement uh, our regulations. And if you have any re research assistance on your part, of course, we are prepared to pay for this. It will be not for greatest, but it will be a good thing if you could help uh, with your research in this way. We've been able, I believe, to resolve very serious matter which concerns uh, state and municipal procurements. For five years, this matter uh, remained uh, unresolved, and the countries only allowed uh, on, on the goods of domestic uh, manufacturing. We agreed, we uh, convinced uh, our people and achieved a decision at the level of the heads of the states that uh, the goods produced uh, in all five countries with the presence of sufficient level of added value uh, are entitled to, to participate in uh, uh, to be used in municipal state procurements, regardless of the fact in which particular country this added value was created. Uh, so there's a, the, uh, the summation is, uh, is being done. If, for example, a particular kind of added value, let's say, of, uh, of internal combustion engines, uh, if, if it's been produced in Russian Federation, and and, and but it's installed on the vehicle in Belarus, then this uh, vehicle, this machine, is entitled to be used in uh, uh, state procurements if it, if it uh, qualifies in terms of uh, the level of added value. So that helps to catch up on the matters of uh, input substitu uh, substitution on domestic uh, localization. Of course, you might choose to criticize me here saying that maybe in, there, sh there should be some natural form for this. But one needs to try to make sure that uh, competition should be also conducted within reasonable uh, limits, especially as regards uh, uh, serious issues because of the insufficiency of the sources of uh, development. In the current year, 2021, uh, Kazakhstan is uh, uh, is being the chair. The chair, and I would like to uh, draw attention to the fact. Maybe you look up uh, the address by the president of Kazakhstan, Mr. Takayev, where he set out five main directions for the development in 2021. The first of these being the matters of development of industrial cooperation. So in this regard, I believe it's, uh, it's very pr promising uh, and very topical, uh, ta relevant task, which we'll be dealing with in this year. We already made some, uh, uh, some headway as far as uh, new developments. We've uh, set up the map of industrialization of Eurasian Economic Union. It was set up not based on uh, recommendations from above, but based on the suggestions from business communities, uh, state bodies of, the, of our countries, which inclu included about 85 fairly major investment, uh, investment projects worth about overall more than 300 US billion dollars of US with, uh, with lots of different technological directions. First of all, uh, these are matters of uh, operation and matters of input substitution. We believe that uh, those decisions that were taken at the session of the Council on Industrial Policy of the Eurasian Economic uh, Union indeed uh, 
it's uh, they cover the cooperation until the year 2025 basically helping to resolve one of the main directions of strategy so in this situation i'd like to draw your special attention to to the documents adopted in december 2021 at the session of the supreme economic council uh, during discussion between heads of states when this discussion may be started to go beyond somewhat uh, beyond the agreed agenda uh, of the day and it was quite an active discussion of the matter of uh, import substitution and uh, and and industrial cooperation and i'm very uh, very appreciative of the president of russian federation uh, esteemed uh, mr vladimir putin who effectively introduced this proposal to set up joint commission on import substitution and not only as far as, uh, as they say, simple things, but also as far as high uh, tech products, including matters of the electronics, uh, um, aircraft building, and so on. We, and uh, so we responded to those proposals promptly, and we believe that matters of digital platform investment projects uh, those are going to be key program documents to raise the level of provision of the countries with strategically important goods. Uh, so, so biotechnologies, uh, medicines uh, definitely enjoy a priority. Now, we all, how shall I put it, uh, uh, in the run-up to the 60-year anniversary of the first manned flight into outer space, I would like to convey to you that we have uh, approved the program for three states, Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan. Uh, outer space program. to set up fairly uh, powerful uh, groups uh, to work on the problems of distance probing of the Earth. And April 29th uh, and 30th, we'll have a session in the city of Kazan of, uh, of our council. And Mr. Ragozin of Roscosmos will be presenting the first uh, approaches, the first developments regarding these uh, really interesting uh, initiatives. And I, I want to say it's not so easy to create new satellites with high uh, resolution. It's, it's enough to say that uh, satellites will be not just with a two meter resolution capacity where uh, objects are identified with linear size of two and more meters. Now we, we're reaching 0 0.5, 0 0.45 meters. It's a very good thing. The ob objective is to make sure that not, not less than 70% of uh, parts, uh, electronics included, should be of domestic uh, manufacturing. So I think that this program, uh, this, uh, this project, it's a kind of, uh, you know, the trial of strengths in order to attract as much as possible the attention to these matters. And, and definitely, it also goes for what I mentioned, uh, matters of provision of medicines. Uh, when we had pandemia, coronavirus infection, those are very, uh, uh, maybe very stressful situations. Of course, one is to look for new directions of uh, industrial cooperation. And here we do have some uh, complications because competitive uh, uh, competitiveness of the goods being manufactured uh, often not uh, not high enough. There's another uh, topic that I would like to simply share with you and to draw your attention uh, of all our um, wide audience. That's as far as state support. If we look at uh, uh, that state support, which has has been given by leading economists uh, of the world, by the governments of these countries, 
you know, to support the economy and the population. It was quite a f powerful input, uh, uh, powerful investment. Uh, in this slide, you can see those are the data of the International Monetary Fund. According to this, the United States has um, directed 19.2% of, of GNP to, towards support last year, European Union 106 and uh, here's Germany, France, Italy. Those uh, uh, figures are quite high. Now, the reason I want to draw your attention to these things, of course, those uh, uh, steps were effective. Uh, uh, effective uh, in terms of uh, increasing uh, the buying capacity of the population on the domestic markets. And definitely here we're talking about large uh, amounts that are being diverted from the uh, uh, national budgets, sometimes to be recovered, sometimes not to be recovered. Uh, so based on that, uh, leading economies of the world actually increasing their competitiveness. Our states have also pro provided, uh, in, percent in terms of percentage, uh, if we look at... Uh, It's definitely a fairly uh, moderate um, and modest uh, share of support. The fact that the United States, the uh, European Union, are continuing to carry out. You're probably aware that the newly elected pre president of the United States, Joe Biden, Joe Biden uh, already uh, initiated 2.2 trillion uh, uh, investment into the uh, American economy. This, of course, goes not only towards corporations, but also to the benefit of population. This year alone already, for example, every American is, is receiving uh, $1,400 from the uh, state budget, uh, really, because of the coronavirus infection. But what I'm leading up to is that we need to work out matters of uh, uh, beneficial uh, crediting, uh, lending to investment projects, uh, budgets of our countries maybe, and our corporations maybe, not quite sufficient for such such investment uh, activity. So, so based on uh, on ultimate recovery, of course we uh, we've taken some steps to work out. Uh, uh, the rates of lending uh, of our uh, bank of development. Unfortunately, so far these banks operate as commercial banks uh, as of today, but to make lending more available so that the enterprises could actually implement the investment ambitions. As far as Eurasian corporations and companies I already mentioned uh, those, very serious matter of uh, uh, food safe security. We have did a lot of work last year. We have uh, uh, we, there's a provision of foods uh, ac across all indicators even uh, uh, in, uh, it's quite quite ample. But there's still a matter of management of food resources, so that it would, would avoid the situations where uh, some states, for, for, for example, when they have uh, excessive amount of grain, such as was the case of Kazakhstan, it's quite difficult, for instance, to grow more grain in, in, in let's say, Armenia. So in this kind of situation, based on our market relations and our union relations, how should we go about are resolving the matter to make sure that there would be certain food specialization. Belarus has excess production of uh, milk and meat, and so, so in, this, in this regard, we need to do more work in a coordinated uh, fashion. So far, we do have some. Uh, uh, this matter that needs to be uh, further resolved. Well, definitely started to look at in a new way at matters of digitalization. And I would like to cite as an uh, 
as an example, which uh, deserves imitation, what is being done by the government of the Russian Federation, and not not only as part of this major project that was recently uh, demonstrated by the government uh, through the president of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Vladimir Putin, but I'm also familiar with this system, which was created by the federal tax service, where you can uh, tra one can trace all the flows of goods and uh, fi financial flows, first of all, based on in, uh, in direct in, in, uh, taxation in terms of uh, so, so, so there are certain new uh, developments. And uh, we could see that on this front, uh, we still uh, are quite behind. It, it, we do have exchanges among our countries, but not all the processes have been uh, uh, put in place, and not all of them are, uh, are functioning in a good uh, way. So specialization is a very good uh, an, an important uh, point uh, of our strategy. Uh, digitalization, of course, is a means of implementation of integration policy. So, so this service function is going to be much broader. As far as the dialogue with business circles, tomorrow we're going to hold a major session of Consultative Council uh, on interaction uh, with business. Uh, of, we are planning on discussing uh, the participation of all business community in implementation of the strategy of 2025 and to consider the code of uh, good faith practices in interaction of retail networks and uh, manufacturers. Uh, we uh, preliminarily have held consultations, pre uh, preparatory consultations with our colleagues from Kazakhstan, Mr. Shohin. Uh, we had a meeting and discussions. I uh, should think uh, it will be interesting uh, proposals. So if you have any particular interest or unwillingness, we'll definitely prepare to share uh, the new developments that will be uh, formed as, as, as part of our consultative council. Uh, another group of questions I would like to draw attention to is, uh, is uh, coordinating our Eurasian integration with the uh, Chinese initiative, One Belt, One Road. I will not go uh, deep into this process. Indeed, it's very uh, powerful initiatives. But one needs simply no, no longer just declare, maybe. We should basically see, see uh, de declaring matters of uh, coordination. Uh, but one needs to, needs to start to create real in, interstate projects, as, particularly as far as whole, wholesale, distributory centers, lo logistics, transportation infrastructure, and so on and so forth. The China and the Central Asian uh, states uh, have been very actively engaged in this. And routes have already been uh, w worked out of entering into Europe, not via Belarus and uh, uh, Russia and Belarus, but uh, over uh, around the south via Turkey, into the southern countries of uh, European Union. So here we're talking about huge volumes of, of shipments of uh, goods. We've actually conducted special uh, analytical review Uh, a few years ago, a joint railway company was set up between between Russia, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, which effectively has take, taken over maybe about 90, 93% of all the contain, container shipments from China to Europe and, uh, and back, which is a very good thing. That uh, uh, is an ev evidence of huge potential. But if we look at... Uh, uh, at the share of such railway shipments compared to the sea shipments, it's about 12 to 15 percent, even less than that. All the rest is is uh, being transported by sea. 
So the situation that we had in uh, the the, uh, the channel of Suez today, uh, the priority is to make sure that goods are transported faster, and the goods can be transported faster by rail. So in this regard, we need to make sure that we engage all infrastructure facilities to resolve all the bottlenecks as far as the transportation of uh, of the flows of goods from China to Europe and back. So such such a need does exist. Uh, there is certain uh, competitiveness among countries, which is not always uh, uh, to, to, to the benefit of all concerned. So what one needs joint efforts here. The same goes for implementation of the idea of uh, of big Eurasian partnership, which was put forward by esteemed uh, Vladimir Ilyich Putin. One of the pillars of this definitely is uh, our Eurasian Economic Union. So having uh, at our command such a huge intellectual uh, uh, potential, the high school of economics could uh, uh, maybe pay uh, attention to, uh, to draw attention of powers that be to the fact that we've been speaking so much about the need to, for coordination, uh, one belt, one, way, one road, also with major Eurasian partnership. But it's time, uh, it, it's time one had the uh, spe specific measurable uh, commercial interest uh, in this. Very serious uh, topic we're planning. Uh, very soon, I plan to discuss this topic with the with the chairperson of Russian Central Bank, uh, Ms. Elvira Nabiulina. It's a matter to do with de-dollarization. I'm not going to describe the theory of this whole matter with us in order to conduct uh, uh, settlements in national currencies. We seem to have no big major problems uh, in this. However, the thing is, all the countries of Eurasian Union have uh, passive uh, of Eurasian Union have passive uh, trade uh, balance in their trade with the Russian Federation in rules. So we need to resolve the matters of uh, financing, maybe through swap systems or through there are some other uh, approaches, because one needs to even out uh, this whole situation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, settlements in national currencies. Is just a part of the problem. One is to make sure that price formation should also be conducted in national currencies. If uh, price formation is done in maybe today in euros or in dollars, then the payment systems may operate uh, with national currency, but it's not still not a solution to this matter. But if we make sure that both prices and settlements are both done in national currencies, then we can achieve a greater success. And of course, other uh, s scenarios are proposed how to improve payment systems, particularly uh, taking into account uh, the continuous uh, uh, hints that we that that come from the Federal Reserve System of the U.S. from the SWIFT system, and so on. I completely support. Uh, the uh, the apprehension that s s set out by Foreign Minister of Russia, Mr. Lavrov, when he spoke recently on this particular matter. Uh, your a question was quite appropriate uh, for, for, from you. It's those are still forecasts. Uh, it's a kind of vision of what's to come. But what do we actually have already? Or oh, let's put it this way: To what extent the strategy is be beginning to be actually implemented? Uh, uh, on May 21st this year, at the session of the Supreme Council of the Eurasian Supreme Council, that's the heads of the state, we'll be presenting the package of changes in the treaty on the Eurasian economy. 137 amendments, a total of 137 amendments to the treaty of the Union. Those are matters of labor migration, uh, uh, documents on the price formation, uh, assessment of uh, of regulatory impact of the treaty, anti-dumping procedures. That's very important. Uh, the procedure for uh, for la for levying indirect taxes and uh, many many other things. Uh, we believe that in this situation, uh, this uh, uh, initiative, it's if it's supported, 
will try to convince. Uh, with that will help create new approaches uh, in our Eurasian economic integration. So in this regard, we realized that uh, no matter how talented or workers or politicians may be, we still one still needs to to have a, a joint intellectual pool, a specialized pool, and of course we encourage you to actively participate in the work of our scientific and technical council. Uh, I've come here with the uh, to sign another two year two year long program uh, between the uh, between our commission and the high school economics. Uh, so to conclude my fairly long uh, speech, we are in favor of specific uh, actions and will appreciate you all your assistance uh, in the interest of our states for the benefit of, of people who have uh, high hopes and great, big expectations for the Eurasian economic integration. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mikhail Vladimirovich, for your very uh, substantive. And uh, uh, personally, I feel a lot of optimism from this speech. It's uh, absolutely obvious, I think, from the standpoint of uh, strategic uh, uh, standpoint, Eurasian Economic Union is feeling quite good, actually. The, the results that have been achieved over the last years, the high results, and the most important indicator here, of course, is trade and investment between the countries, uh, uh, member states of the Eurasian Union. You mentioned uh, interaction with China, for instance. And now a well-known fact is that uh, the trade between and investment between Kazakhstan and China are uh, from year to year becoming less, uh, but they're increasing with Russia. Over the all seven years after China put forward initiatives uh, built on One Belt, One Road, the process, slightly different process has been has been set in motion uh, compared to what's often the kind of scares we see in some newspapers. So I, I address here particularly our student audience, our colleagues. Not all this being uh, uh, written in newspapers is, uh, is always true. Facts need to be checked. So today you have a unique uh, opportunity to find out how things, what things are like. As, as, as one character in the old, novel, in the old book said, don't read Soviet newspapers in the morning. Uh, so now we have a unique opportunity to find out uh, things as they are. Now I encourage, uh, I won't take any more of your time, I would encourage the uh, audience to, uh, put your, to ask your questions and make sure you uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, a student of the f fourth year student of international relations, my question, I would like to clarify the point that you didn't quite touch upon in your lecture. P -p specifically, I would be interested as a student of international relations, whether you support more expansion of integration or its deepening. Well, maybe the shortcoming of my lecture, thank you for your question. Maybe you'll help me adjust it. We have this Institute of State Observers, State Observers, and uh, now Cuba and Uzbekistan uh, uh, holding those positions. Let me dwell on Uz Uzbekistan in this case. They're very serious uh, at the present uh, working with us in terms of preparing an uh, appropriate plan of action. So they are uh, uh, gathering more information about upsides and downsides of Eurasian economic integration, uh, being aware that uh, that a political decision is maybe uh, being developed about the possibility of joining our uh, Eurasian Economic Union. So we do encourage th this. It's a big country. It's enough to say the natural increase in population 
is quite great and uh, definitely they have we are definitely interested in in having our union expanding of course uh, there's some points for discussion debatable points such as how, on what kind of conditions. Uh, that is to say, so that it wouldn't be just uh, racing to have more qu bigger quantity at the expense of quality. So the basic principle here is uh, for new members, uh, not just bringing forward their own conditions and demands, uh, which would uh, make it necessary to revise the basic treaty, but so that uh, the new members would join the union with uh, respect for uh, for what has been agreed on already by the by the uh, old timers uh, countries let's and would uh, assume obligations to be guided by the regulations and norms that have been already uh, developed that is to say to bring not their rules but to by recognizing the rules and documents of the union of course, there may be some uh, transition periods, but they should be clearly structured. Uh, they should be uh, indicated what, what specifically and for which period of time. As for cooperation uh, with uh, uh, far abroad countries, we have uh, treaties on zones of free trade with Vietnam, Serbia, and Singapore. At present, uh, there's active work uh, underway with Israel, Iran, Egypt, and there are certain trade agreements already, even though the, uh, in terms of framework agreements with China. So the documents of uh, uh, some documents are largely about intentions, but uh, other documents actually set out specific obligations of the parties. But one needs to bear in mind that we definitely need, first of all, to look at, uh, at the benefits here for the countries, uh, members of the Union, as far as trade. Now, the, this particular agreement contributed to uh, increasing export of Vietnam to, to our countries. Now, the balance actually is not in our favor. We, our five countries, uh, our exports have increased too, but uh, it, it, the increase is much more modest in terms of the pace of it compared to the Vietnamese export to, towards us. So, of course, we do encourage, uh, uh, we welcome this. There's no doubt about that as far as the expanding a group of goods. But one also needs to make sure that one does end up watering flowers in another, in another person's garden, in somebody else's garden, as they say. As far as uh, cooperation with the European Union, so far it's very modest, but we realize, uh, I mean, there are sanctions and other things uh, uh, here. At any rate, we're conducting a dialogue now on uh, different sites and platforms which concern technical regulations uh, and technical regimes to make sure that our goods, uh, in terms of all the requirements for manufactured goods, would be harmonized with the requirements of the European Union. So uh, I'd like to say that uh, in terms of any special race for having more and more. Uh, uh, we're not setting this as a priority, but we will do all we can to make sure that new states would be uh, uh, consciously uh, come to the Union with, 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 with the particular baggage of proposals, uh, not, not just in a unilateral way. So one during the Union, one should see also what would be the benefit in it for the Union, not just for the country that claims to be 
to become a member of the Eurasian Union. Thank you very much, uh, Mikhail Vladimirovich. Vladimirovich, what do you think? Uh, does one need to have a, a, a direct official dialogue with your with European Commission? Maybe we have yet to grow. Maybe it's uh, maybe one, we should not worry too much about this now. Let me cite two examples. Uh, in the past, uh, when Czechia before it. Before it became member of the European Union, the president, Gavel, uh, said, and I remember his, his phrase, uh, saying that uh, we used to look th through the door uh, at what's inside. Uh, so in principle, we have a large uh, turnover of goods. Uh, we definitely the in investment import is quite power, quite great from Europe, particularly in investment, uh, uh, cars, mechanisms, technologies. Of course, not to see this would be, would be wrong, I suppose. However, there needs to be a well-balanced policy uh, in order to, uh, it w would not be at, the, at, at our expense, not, not, not to our detriment. So the words that I, I cited of, of, of Vladimir, Vladimir Putin about the consolidated import substitution, we, uh, we can do quite a lot on our own, manufacture a lot of stuff uh, ourselves, not just, not just to buy or, uh, or import, uh, which, of course, because of the volatility of the prices for energy, we don't always uh, secure the desired inflow of, of hard currency that we would like to uh, expect. So uh, they're very careful, well-balanced contacts. Uh, so we need to be able to see what makes, uh, what makes Europe tick, what's happening there, and what kind of directions uh, might be of benefit, not just today, but tomorrow too. And uh, also, I would like to cite this example. I remember that uh, this article by Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, uh, it's, it's, it's a fundamental kind of article where he was saying that Eurasian Economic Union and European unions are partners. And so we need to cooperate, as they say. But later on, unfortunately, because of various political and economic uh, Uh, statements and actions on the part of uh, U.S. and European Union. This topic uh, took a back, uh, back seat, uh, was, was a, a back burner. But basically, it could be uh, a very interesting alliance. At present, it's quite successfully being implemented through the cooperation with China, India, and I should think the success uh, there will be as great uh, as could be expected maybe 10 years ago. Uh, we still have time for a couple of questions. Now here's the uh, man. Can you hear me? Mikhail Vladimirovich, thank you very much for your lecture. I'm a, I'm a bachelor student of international relations. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. At the end of 2019, Yes, and Mercosur signed a, a memo on cooperation. Uh, so in this connection, I would like to learn your opinion about the prospects of signing agreements with our regional blocs, such as Mercosur, for instance. It's a good question, indeed. Uh, thank you. We can provide quite an uh, extensive information on this matter, actually. Now it's a new phase. Uh, lots of new various documents, including uh, documents with international trade and economic uh, organizations. But they all, uh, to, some, to some extent, uh, their character, uh, memos, uh, uh, declaratory, uh, declaratory character. Uh, so it's the second year that I've been wo working in this capacity. So uh, I'm aspiring to 
to make sure that this situation is uh, turned around so we can actually reach uh, more specific uh, uh, of course we're in favor of peace and friendship and so we're going to cooperate uh, there too but all needs to be transformed eventually into specific tangible projects uh, perhaps uh, there'll be fairly few of those some of them might be pioneers, uh, but indeed, uh, we, with those, we could actually work out uh, uh, appropriate norms and regulations, and also drawing into this process uh, uh, more companies from each other side. So far, uh, let's let me put it this way: so far, a kind of a, a carpet is, is being laid, uh, indicating the uh, ver various areas where one could be that could be favorable for work. But now we need we need to make it more specific, and in accordance uh, with the treaty, uh, the our flag is on the year 2025. So no more. No more time for uh, intentions or de declarations. Uh, we, our time is up as far as declarations and uh, uh, and declarations. Now we need to get on with the uh, pragmatical uh, matters, with specific, including, for instance, now we are working out matters with Iran, matters of transportation and communications between North and South. We were quite, quite specific there. Matters relating to uh, railway to, uh, transportation, uh, uh, automotive transportation, China, Kazakhstan, Russia Federation, Belarus, Europe. Because Europe also builds, uh, they have a major project. Uh, industrial uh, fleet, uh, great uh, stone. I think they worked out quite good logistics uh, with that. Also, uh, a place, a place near Minsk, so it could be spread here and already appropriate uh, agreements with, with, with Germany, specifically with uh, 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 in order to enter Europe. Uh, and as a, with Poland, who wants to uh, take over Chinese shipments and, to, and to, to spread them, distribute them across Europe on, on their own. I actually had a meeting with Prime Minister of Poland. We discussed these matters, but uh, they have very big ambitions. And so the Prime Minister of Poland believes that, uh, that from sea to sea, from, from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, Poland may... Uh, may be quite active in its, in its positioning uh, with all these affairs. But now this uh, coordination uh, of China, Kazakhstan, Russian Federation, Belarus, and uh, uh, reaching uh, the, uh, the port infrastructure on the Baltic Sea in Germany, those are real initiatives. And and there may be a good synergy effect uh, because uh, uh, coming up to the border with the United Europe, we need to give the answer. What's next? So, it's not just a different uh, gauge uh, size of trucks, it's also uh, shipments, reloading, other services, and so on. So let's look at this uh, flow of uh, goods uh, and, and services for, for St. Petersburg uh, in order to engage all the capacities uh, at the Baltic uh, Sea in the Russian Federation and definitely at least 30 uh, percent. There's a fall in a 30 percent fall in the in the cost of the services of the seaports, so, such as Klaipeda, Venspils, and so on. So here we have the matters of both economy and politics, as well as logistics and so on. Oh, I believe we, one needs to have vision of all these matters uh, in a comprehensive way.
As a, some, as a person born in, in Leningrad. Next, next, after China, should be the port of St. Petersburg. After Ch no, thank you very much. There's, there's a girl there. Unfortunately, my colleagues are uh, hurrying me up. Okay, can we have more, one more question? One more question. Yes, uh, I do apologize, uh, esteem, uh, thank you very much for your lecture. My question is very, it's quite short for clarification. You spoke for Uzbekistan, actually, in the academic, uh, academic, academic experts community, there's a discussion going on. Uh, what would be the interest of Eurasian Commission, uh, Eurasian Union, in involving uh, Uzbekistan into, into the process of integration. I can tell you, Uzbekistan is a huge market. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost uh, 40 million uh, population, young population too, uh, growing. Uh, growing. And uh, we're seeing that, uh, there are good trends in, uh, in trade. I can't speak for, for our entire Eurasian Union, but, uh, but as far as uh, the trade with Russian Federation. So, so those matters relating to labor migration too, and uh, that's a particularly painful uh, topic. So Russian Federation, about 1,600,000 citizens of Uzbekistan are working in the Russian Federation. And so matters are being considered that it needs to be organized uh, labor migration, naturally it's, uh, with some social packages and so on. So one is to say that uh, As I'm, be, I'm being told, there's appropriate officials, but there are also forces that in Uzbekistan, forces that claim that maybe one shouldn't be, well, one shouldn't haste uh, to join the uh, Eurasian Economic Union. Maybe one should first uh, uh, take, a, take a good look at the possible upsides, potential upsides of this. So there's no like uh, socialist competition uh, in this. Decisions will be definitely will be made in a balanced way, take into account all the political decisions uh, taken in the country that claims or might claim uh, the membership. And of, and of course, as for, uh, within the countries of the Eurasian Union, it all needs to be done in a conscious way. But that, this is just a supposition that Uzbekistan might choose over the next few years, might, might choose to become full-fledged member. So far, Uzbekistan is a, it's a state observer, so we'll work with, with this Uzbekistan. And on the 29th and the 30th, uh, we'll be signing uh, with the Prime Minister a whole working plan of action on the economic cooperation of this particular country. Thank you very much, Mikhail uh, Let me uh, thank you and, and wish you successes in developing Eurasian integration. Thank you.